Com for more info. But speaking of balls, we're honored to have with us Hugh Keelan. He's a member of the San Francisco Fog. It's an inclusive rugby football club for gays and lesbians. Anyone, really? Uh, Hugh, thanks for being with us. A pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm sitting here. Uh, you are, I should mention, from Dublin, and your position as listed on the website is eight man. Now, I read that, <laughs> and I thought, position eight man, you are one kinky guy. <laughs> Well, there are very few positions that actually have a number after them. So there, there's no 69, uh, at least not on the field. Uh, no, but you guys are, um, you guys have been around for a while, right? Yeah, this team, uh, the Fog rugby team started uh, in late uh, 2000. And uh, uh, Mark Bingham was one of the guys who was with the team from the very early, from the very early stages. And I obviously played with the team up to September 2001. And... Uh, uh, we've gone from strength to strength, um, really, all the years since then. Right, and the re- one of the reasons we wanted to have you on, of course, is because you actually played with Mark Bingham, and of That's course, right. he uh, was a San Franciscan, a hero to many. He played on San Francisco Fog, and of course, died uh, tragically on nine eleven. He was one of the thirty eight passengers on hijacked uh, United Airlines Flight ninety three. Uh, that crashed outside of Pittsburgh. He was thirty one years old. That's right. What was Mark like? Who Mark on the rugby field was a fierce competitor. Uh, he had played uh, rugby at Cal, uh, which uh, unusually, for, I think, for any college team, they are just head and shoulders above all the other college rugby teams. So they would go out and win by big scores and uh, coached by a guy who's very himself high, very competitive. So Mark joined the Fog, and he, uh, to some of the guys who were new to the sport and new maybe to team sport, they found him somewhat intimidating on the field. That said, off the field, he was... Such a warm and uh, warm hearted and uh, very friendly guy really made time to make sure that guys who might have felt a little bit out of the loop uh, in the sort of the pell mell activity on the field really were included and involved um, socially. Now, it's been five years since this happened, but in some ways it's sort of been a time warp. A lot has happened. Uh, to honor his memory and Mm. his legacy. There's uh, something called the Bingham Cup. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's a remarkable, remarkable story, really. Uh, you know, the first ever sort of tournament for gay rugby teams that took place in the U.S. was actually in the summer of 2001. It was a mini tournament held in Washington, D.C. D.C. was the first ever gay rugby team in the U.S. Uh, uh, so the following summer, fast forward, or following, um, sorry, three months later was when Mark uh, died. And uh, uh, nine months later, here in San Francisco, we decided, well, look, we would like to organize a tournament to honor his memory. And uh, so the Bingham Cup was uh, started. At that tournament, there were seven uh, clubs taking part. There were uh, two from the UK, which had been the original two gay rugby teams in the world. There were the DC team, the first ever started in the US, the Fog rugby team here in San Francisco, one from Seattle and one from LA. So that was the initial tournament. Uh, one, I'm delighted to say, I'm proud to say, by the Fog. Um, <laughs> really, you know, surprised a lot of people. And just quickly to tell you, we we uh, played in the tournament in 2006, just three months ago. There were close to, I think... This was in New York, right? That's correct. Yeah. Close to 35 teams. So in that period of time, the growth of gay rugby, and so much of this, I personally believe, is absolutely directly attributable to Mark and the inspiration he provided to... You know, to gay guys all around. It's a very, it's a very tangible legacy, and and we're going to be hearing a lot in the next twenty four hours about uh, the last five years, and it's still very fresh in our minds. This, I can't imagine. This really, uh, five years ago, it must have been devastating for you guys. Oh, it was. There were so many people who were really just in disbelief, um, and the fact that it affected. Uh, those of us involved with the team in such a personal way, uh, it was very, you know, it was very profound. I suppose in some ways people felt like we're on the West Coast, not the East, and so we're removed from the events of, of, of New York and of uh, Washington. But the fact that Mark, when it became known very quickly that Mark had been one of the guys on this flight, uh, was a tremendous sense of loss. Also at the same time, a real sense of pride as it became clear that Mark had been one of the guys who had uh, been instrumental in the sort of retaking or the effort to retake control of the plane from the hijackers. And uh, the inspiration followed on from there. The number of guys who joined the Fog rugby team because they read about Mark Bingham and what he had done and thought, you know what, I want to be part of that or I feel inspired to do something really, you know, different and profound in my life. And uh, 
extraordinary what uh, what it led to. You're listening to Queer Channel Radio on 960 The Quake, KQKE Oakland, San Francisco, and we are talking with Hugh Keelan. He is with San Francisco Fog, who played, he played with Mark Bingham. You've had three Bingham Cups, and it, it if anything can be said to be good that has come of this, this horrible loss, a guy you guys called Bear Trap? Is that, uh, what is, right. What's behind that? <laughs> Mark's tasting, guys, was a uh, big hairy man, and the bigger and the hairier, the better. <laughs> wow. He now, and my did they play on the team? Something in common. <laughs> <laughs> Do bears play rugby, though? Oh, listen, uh, it takes all shapes and all sizes and uh, all ages and but all, yeah. Just strong noses. I'm sitting here. We were talking uh, during the break about how many uh, rugby players get their nose broken. You were saying you break yours about twice a season. Well, no, once every two seasons, but yeah. yeah it's, it's, and I'm it's, sitting here looking at the profile of your nose, and it's it's obviously... Uh, uh, if that's a compliment, I accept. Thank you. <laughs> um, but... It, you know, I, I, I feel like when you talk about, uh, you guys have, you. Uh, it's very prominent on your website where you honor Mark Bingham. It's a, it's a definite legacy, and it's very a way so. of moving forward. Very much so. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the thoughts in my mind is this, that the, uh, you know, gay rugby was pretty much non-existent uh, f- five years ago at the time of Mark's death. And uh, yet the number of gay rugby teams that exist all around the U.S. and around the globe which have been embraced by their the local unions. Uh, and, you know, you would consider rugby much like football as a sort of a bastion of heterosexuality. And uh, those barriers have just come tumbling down. Uh, yeah. Well, tell us, uh, the the website, of course, is sffog.org. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. And you guys, what have you guys got coming up? Well, uh, the season is just beginning, um, and uh, in the next two months, we uh, sort of get ourselves ramped up for the competitive league season. The Fog uh, men's team plays in the Northern California Rugby Union, and we play in their competitions. And so the competitive season starts in, I think it's maybe it's late, mid-late December, so the next couple of months are prepping for that. Uh, but at the same time, it's also a great time for guys who are brand new to the sport. If they have a taste to come out and play, it would be a pleasure to have them. We also, just very quickly to say, we have brand new, as of yesterday, the first match ever, the Fog women's rugby team. They went out and nice. played Hayward and beat them by uh, a country mile and played, <laughs> played superbly. You played so. Hayward. Yeah, nothing Michelle, personal. there you go. <laughs> Which Michelle, Michelle? It's time for you to go out, Michelle, and play for Hayward. I feel like I would break a bone or something. I, I don't <laughs> I think know. She like might a, be a little delicate for <laughs> rugby, don't you think? I'm what are not you? So but, sure. Uh, are you even a hundred pounds? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm 110. Oh, you look like you're a fighter, Michelle. You could be, you could be the ball. Fierce, fierce. No, <laughs> well, the she women. Looks like a fighter. I tell you, and the women who are out there is the I'm same. I'm curious to know what do the women look like so in the rugby some, team. There are some women actually interested in the Hayward team yesterday. A lot of them were were um, hairy from no from the Pacific Islands. And oh, okay. So they tend to be oh, I, yeah. higher, sort of bigger body mass, better suited <laughs> to the game. I saw a lot of those girls at the Metro on Saturday. <laughs> That's exactly they were right. They're having a, a fundraiser. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. But then there are other girls who would be literally just like yourself. Now, are there cheerleaders in rugby? Uh, <laughs> gosh. Well, I suppose every time you have gay men around, you've got cheerleaders. <laughs> uh, not officially. <laughs> <laughs> what's one thing uh, that people should know about rugby, and what's one thing that people should know about gay rugby? Now, we have to consider that many people in the Queer Channel radio audience may not know exactly what rugby is. Yeah, so very quickly about rugby. What should people know? Well, rugby rugby is, it is not dissimilar to football. It's played without all the pads, without the helmets, but in terms of it's played with an oval ball, uh, there are a couple of key differences in the rules that you know we won't go into now. But uh, uh, in terms of a sport for people who have an appetite to go out and want to be part of a team, two, to be part of a, a tremendous, uh, there's a tremendous team spirit and camaraderie in rugby in general, and absolutely it's, it's true in the fog. Uh, um, so rugby has, you know, you travel anywhere in the world and you say you're a rugby player, you'll have a welcome from any other rugby player or rugby team. Uh, and what do we know about the fog? The fact that this is an extraordinary, an extraordinary group of people and a real pleasure to, and privilege to be part of. Hugh Keelan from San Francisco Fog, thanks so much for being with us. And, and hats off to you guys for honoring the memory of Mark Bingham. You can go to sffog.org, find out about the Bingham Cup, about... Not only his memory, but his legacy. And and, uh, and come out and play. Yeah. We'd love to have you. You guys are great. We love you. And we won't ask you to sing a rugby song. Because <laughs> that can get a little foul, I know. The FCC might be on to you. <laughs> Don't make me push this dump button. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, you are listening to Queer Channel Radio 960 The Quake, the website sffog.org. Thanks for being with us, Hugh. Here okay. on Thank Queer, you. Queer Channel Radio. You're listening to America's.